Hey guys and welcome to Slasher X Games. Due to the way transitions would basically take over legacy versions of Game Maker with a main loop of their own, they were ultimately removed entirely from Studio because this is now impossible with the way Studio is written. So if you now use Studio and you really want some sort of transition to spice up your game a little, that's what I'm going to show you today. So it's going to be a basic fade in and fade out effect whenever rooms are changed and the code is very easy to implement into a new or existing project. So here we go. This is what we've got. We've got alpha at the top. This is our alpha value. At present it's zero. I've got a button that says next room and when I click it it's going to fade. Check that. Fading out to the next room. Think changes room. Button now says previous and if I click it it's gonna go back and I can click these at any point in time to make them switch. So yeah, fade and fade out. We can have one object called object fade and when that object fade is created it's going to fade in to the room and then when we click a button, we're going to tell object fade to now fade out of the room. So it's pretty cool. So let's jump right into that code, and I'll show you exactly how this can be accomplished. All right, so this is the simple studio transition project file. In our sprites, I've got those two buttons. Button next, button previous, right over there. They have nothing special attached to them. It's just one sprite uh, sub-image. Then fonts, I've got font normal. It's just a 22-point font normal aerial right over there. Um, objects, we've got button next, button previous, right at the moment they just sit in the middle of the room, right over there. Then in our rooms, room 1, room 2, they just have these buttons right in the middle of them, see, right there. Okay, so to begin we're going to create an object called object fade. An object fade is going to have a create event, right over here, let's drag in some code. Here we're going to say fade in equals true because when it's created obviously it means the room has changed so now we are fading into that room from total blackness to you know transparency and finally uh, there will be no black rectangle across the screen so we're going to set alpha to 1 to start it off that's totally black totally op opaque uh, then we're going to call an alarm 0 equals room speed times this depends on how quickly we want this to fade. So in this case, I'm just saying 0 0.05 of a second. Yeah. And once that's done, let's go OK. Then let's bring in that alarm 0. Drag that in. Firstly, we're going to say, well, if fade in equals true. Open up that code block. Then here we're going to say if alpha equals, oh, whoops, if alpha is greater than 0 some of that. Then here we're going to say, well, alpha is now going to be minus equal by 0.015. This value over here, this is the amount the alpha is decreasing. So we're starting at 1, which is fully opaque. Then every time this alarm 0 is called, we're going to decrease that alpha by 0.015. So we're making it more and more transparent every time this alarm is called. Then over here we're going to say, we're going to call it again, alarm 0 equals room speed. I'm going to call it at the exact same speed we did here in the create so that we've got a consistent fade right over there. Now at the same time we're going to be thinking well what happens if alpha you know is less than 0. So here we're going to say else one of these alpha equals 0. All right. so we don't want alpha to go below 0 it's going to be decreasing by 0.015. So if ever it gets to below zero for some strange reason and it causes this alarm zero, that's going to fail. And then it's going to jump to here and it's going to make sure alarm, uh, I'm sorry, it's going to make sure alpha is zero and it's not going to call this alarm again. Then once that's done, we can close this up right like that and say okay. So that pretty much is the fade in part that's going to call the alarm and that's going to decrease the value of alpha. Now we're going to need to draw this rectangle, this black rectangle that's going to cover the screen and that's what fades in and fades out and makes it appear um, as a transition. So we're not using a sprite to draw this. I mean you could if you wanted to really um, create a black sprite of whatever your room or view size is and then just decrease its alpha over time. But if you're going to have different view sizes or room sizes or whatever, just rather draw a giant black rectangle that changes its alpha. It's a lot uh, easier. So to do this, we're going to add a draw event right over here. And object fade, I'm going to make minus 100. Make sure it's right on top. 
Then we're gonna add some code. Right over here. Let me just make this bigger. Okay. And here we're gonna say first firstly draw set color. And then we're gonna put in black or C black. Right over there. So whatever is drawn after this is all gonna be black. Then we're gonna create an, an alpha block over here. Draw set alpha. And here we're gonna set this as alpha. And then here is gonna be our alpha block. Set that back to one so that anything drawn after this all is drawn the way it should be. Everything inside this block between lines two and six is all gonna be depending on whatever the value of alpha is. So here we're gonna draw a rectangle. Okay. And the rectangle at the bottom says x1, y1, x2, y2, and outline. So x1 and y1 are going to be both zero. That's the top left corner. Then x2 is going to be room width and room height. Right like that. It's going to be a 1280 by 720 right over there. Then our last thing is outline. We're going to say false. Just like that. That's all good. There we go. Take away some space. So that's our alpha block right over here. We're setting whatever's drawn after this set alpha is going to be depending on whatever alpha is. That decreases or increases depending on whether we're fading in or fading out. Then it's this here. This is in between this alpha block. So that's going to be drawn with the alpha. Then we're going to reset alpha to 1. Everything drawn afterwards is going to be all dependent on its own alpha conditions. Then to spice things up a bit, we're going to add some draw code here to draw that alpha value. So we can say draw set font. This is all just extra, so I'm going to whiz through this. And finally, draw text. Here we're going to draw, let's say, room width divided by 2, then about 50 pixels from the top of the screen. Then here we can say alpha, oops, alpha equals something plus string alpha. I think that should be fine. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, okay, that's good. So it'll just draw the, the value of, of the current alpha so we can actually see what's going on. Now, alarm zero is going to be used to handle the fade in. So we're going to need to handle the fade out true. Also, you know, so what's going to happen is a button is going to be pressed. Once that button is pressed, depending on what kind of button it is, it's either going to call this object fades alarm zero for fading in or alarm one. Now, because fade ins are handled by the create, that's pretty much going to be the event that calls alarm zero. Every button will be calling alarm one, which is going to be the fade out. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to add code for alarm one right over there. Drag this in. It's going to be very similar to alarm zero, but I'm going to write this out again. So in this case, we're going to say, well, if fade in equals false, right over there. Open up the big code block. Line three, we're going to say if alpha is less than one. All right. Then we are going to set alpha plus equals 0.015. There we go, we're increasing alpha. So as long as alpha isn't fully opaque, then it's going to be increasing. See, So we're going from a transparent state to a fully opaque state over time. Then over here we're going to call alarm1 again, equals room speed times 0.05, I think it was. So every 0 0.05 of a second, it's going to be um, doing this whole alarm again, right over there. So if we say else, otherwise, we are going to set alpha to 1. Then we're also going to say, well, now that it is fully opaque, we can change the room. So if room equals room 1, so this, oh, whoops, this little object fade is also going to handle the changing of rooms. So when the room is fully opaque, we can now change the room, then it will have the create event, which will then um, fade everything in. So this is say room go to no, 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 go to room two. Otherwise, we are going to go to room go to 
room one. All right, is that it? I think so. Close all these up. Okay, so let's run over it quickly. If fade in equals false, it means we're fading out. Um, if the alpha is less than one, so if we're not fully opaque, then we're going to increase our alpha value going from transparent to opaque, and we're going to call this alarm again, and it's just going to go back to the top from here. Otherwise, if we've gone through this, if this alarm has been called for the last time, and finally alpha is not less than one, then we're going to set alpha to one, make sure it's still fully opaque, then we're going to determine from which room we are in to uh, which room we need to go to. Just like that. So if we're in room one, we go to room two. If we are in room two, we go to room one. So now we got to show. Well, so now we've got to have the buttons that call either the alarm zeros or alarm one event, which are these two: button next and button previous. So here we've got the create. In the create, it just sets it to the middle of the room. We're going to add a mouse left pressed event. Bring in some code here. And this code is going to be rather simple. Firstly, we're going to say over here, object fade. So we need to refer to a local variable in object fade's uh, jurisdiction. We're going to click dot and fade in equals false. So we're not fading in. Uh, the button's been pressed. We're fading out. So fade in equals false. Then we're going to say object fade dot alarm one equals room speed times 0.05, right? 0.05 of a second, it's going to be doing that alarm. So just like that. So firstly, we have to call, use the dot operator because we are referring to uh, a variable within the locality of object fade. We're setting it to false because we are fading out, not fading in. Then we are calling alarm one, uh, object fades alarm one which it does it over there. So all we've got to do is copy this code into button previous. Left pressed, paste it right there. Okay, okay, that's all good. Just like that, put that at the top. So when we push next, for example, it's going to set object fades fade in variable to false, and it's going to call alarm one. So when it calls alarm one and object fade, it's going to be saying right over here, if fade in equals false, which it is, if the alpha is less than one, then we're going to increase the alpha going all the way to fully opaque, calling this uh, alarm every time as long as it is not fully opaque. Otherwise, we're going to set it to fully opaque and go to the respective room, right over there. And then when object fade is created in the next room, like such, create, it's going to fade, set fade into true. It's going to set its alpha value to one, fully opaque, for example. Then it's going to call its alarm zero event, which is going to call this. It's going to check if fade in equals true, which it is. As long as alpha is greater than zero, it's going to decrease alpha, getting more and more transparent until it is somewhat non-existent. And it's going to be doing this, oh, what have we got here? It's going to be doing that um, every 0 0.05 of a second right there. So glad we went through that. I don't know what that code problem was. That was odd. Now that that's done, we're going to put object fade in every room that we want to have this fade. So that's room two. It doesn't matter where you put it, no one can see it. And we've got that to negative 100 because we want it to be right on top of everything. So now that that's all done, we can save our project and run it, and we should get the same outcome as in the preview. There we go, it's fading in. There we go, fading in, and I click next room. It's fading out slowly until it gets to one and changes room. Fading in, see? Just like that, and I can click it at any point in time. See, you go like that, click that there, see? <laughs> it always decreases or increases alpha depending on what it is right now. And when it gets to one or zero, it changes the room. So if we wanted that to happen sooner, go into object fade, you can go into the alarm or whatnot, and you can just change this variable. That just changes the amount of time that it calls the alarm zero. If you want the fade to increase and decrease by a, a larger amount, that's this variable right over here. So that's basically a very simple fade in, fade out. Rather easy to implement in any of your existing projects or maybe you're starting a new project with Studio and you would really like to use transitions. So if you like this tutorial, um, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. You can get the project files for Studio right in the description below. And if you're feeling generous, you can buy me a beer or a coffee sometime. 
always look forward to the sort of things you guys send me. Links are in the description. The studio project in the description will have all this code as well as all the comments. Um, you know, it'll be a summary of what I've said in this tutorial, so you can check that out too. So thanks for watching, and stay tuned for another great gaming tutorial. Cheers for now.